very much. And uh, my name is Ulf Monson. I work for a company called Swaco. Uh, and yeah, it's basically an engineering consultancy company. Got a lot of architects and so on. But I work at the nerd division uh, doing IT and stuff that, like that. So I, um, I made this short introduction on myself as a uh, fake map. Uh, I made a custom transformer that is called the Fake Country Creator. It's, it's in the hub if you want to download it. It creates an um, imaginary small country, different there. So I put some keywords in there, a bit of FME, nerd stuff, and so on. So I think there's a road called Nerd Drive, uh, FME Ton, or something like that in there. So you can play with that if you want to. I've been using FME since the late 90s, so I'm kind of a FME nerd. So uh, this is a true story. And the ca characters in there are not fictional. They are real. So this, this is actually what happened. Uh, so uh, a few of you probably know. It moves quite slow, this one. Oh, there it is. And uh, we've done quite a few projects uh, throughout, throughout the years in putting data into Minecraft. Uh, we did a project for Stockholm a few years ago and so on. And um, last year, we helped the Swedish National Land Survey to create uh, a model of the entire Sweden in one scale. So let's see if I can uh, uh, fire this one up. I wonder how I start this one. Uh. Ah, maybe like that. No. Do you know that, where you start the video in presentation mode? There? Uh, There's normally a play button in there. If you go there, if you... <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the play button. Yeah. We have our I challenges today with the presentations. <laughs> so, okay. It probably takes... Did, did you press it? Not oh. yet. Yeah. There. Well, we had, uh, in the beginning of 2016, we had created a model in one scale. Ne uh, yeah. No, I think, yeah, if you leave that to me, I think it's probably that one. Okay, perfect. Okay, does it start now? No. <laughs> it's a great video, otherwise. Uh, but, but it, sh yeah. Now, it shows the differences because we had created this uh, project in. Uh, eight meter blocks uh, as a resolution where each block in Minecraft were uh, eight meter. And uh, then we got the question, well, uh, that's nice, but uh, can you in short time create a, a model of big parts of Sweden in scale one to one? And of course we said yes. And um, um, it is, Sweden is a fairly big country. It's, it's not as big as uh, Russia and Canada, but, but it's still a part. This is, if you look at the north, there, there's a municipality called Kiruna, or Kiruna. It's actually, I think it's the biggest municipality in the world, if you look at the uh, size of it. So we had a few of these areas where we had to produce a um, one meter 3D model. And uh, that was, of course, a challenge. And we ha it had to be done before the summer holidays last, uh, last year. And, and this is our um, very uh, happily, expectantly uh, client at the National Land Survey. He looked happy with this bright idea. So we said, oh, of course, we'll do that. And uh, we realized that we only have a few weeks left, so we need a big computer for this one. So, and, and we knew, uh, yeah, we were aware of the cloud. We'd done solution for that one because, as I mentioned, we'd done quite a few projects with this. And uh, we were, you know, uh, very accustomed to the workflows we had. So we thought, well, a big computer will solve this. So, you know, uh, we um, set up and ordered this super duper computer. 
And it was like a nightmare. Everything that could go wrong went wrong in this process. It was actually ridiculous in this situation. Uh, the order seemed to be misplaced as the, the, the company ordered this. So um, when we realized that, because we didn't get feedback, it turned out the computer was out of stock, that model. So we had to reorder it. And then it seemed uh, they lost some for it. So it was back ordered. So the days kept going like this. Uh, and then, oh, we, we got the news, we delivered it. But then it was somehow lost in the mail, <laughs> in delivery. So finally, we got it, uh, it missed the graphics cards. And there also was no hard drive in there. No, who needs that? And, and, uh, and, and finally, when we got some scrap pieces together, managed to get to work, and there was no fan in it. So this is my colleague, uh, Sebastian, there in there. He was really heroic in this situation because he went on bike all across Malmö trying to find parts for this one. So, I mean, this is a ridiculous situation. We're a big company, like 15,000 employees, and, and we, we were waiting like this and figure, figuring out. But we were saved by the bell because uh, Mojang, Microsoft, uh, at this time they changed the usage guidelines, what you were allowed to do in Minecraft and so on. So they were a lot more strict. So um, the, the legal advisors for our clients, they say, oh, hold it, guys, we have to examine this uh, you know, thoroughly so we do this correct in a correct way. Uh, what can we have in there? Are we allowed to have this and that and so on? So, that, that was good news for us because we knew if, if the lawyers are involved, this will take time. <laughs> so we, <laughs> at least it's not our fault in this time. So, but uh, sadly enough, uh, there was some bright um, guy uh, there. I guess, it, okay, no, it was, okay. I guess it wasn't a lawyer doing that, but uh, no sad. But someone come up with the bright idea. Oh, why not ask Mojang if it's okay instead of studying all the legal stuff? And, yeah, turned out to be okay to do this pro project then. But then we, okay, so then we had even less time to finish this project. So we were sitting there with a you know, crappy computer, hardly working, not as according to the specs, and, and really we had to do some very, very nifty processing in short time. So we set up a cloud crisis plan. We realized, okay, the, the only way to solve this is by using the cloud. And, and I, I really like that. If you look at the FME cloud, like, uh, cloud um, page, there is skip the hardware, it's a hassle. <laughs> we can sign on that one. That it, it, it's really true in, when you're in a situation like this. So this is we who work with this, Anna and Sebastian, who done a lot of work with that before. So we figured out that uh, we were ought to deliver the actual data files to the end client because they have their environment where they want to distribute these data files. And we are talking about, uh, I can't remember the numbers, but uh, the source data we get and what we produce, it, it, it's huge. We're talking uh, terabytes of data in here. But uh, we have workflows set up where we, where we work in chunks. I think someone mentioned that, was it you maybe earlier? M most of 3D processing you have to do in chunks somehow. So we had our workflows uh, sharing to that. So we realized we have to figure out a way to get the data up into FME Cloud, process it there, and then get it back into our network. So we had to figure out this flow. And I mean, it seems uh, fairly easy when you do it, but, but even if it's easy, it's a bit complicated and still, because you have to move files uh, back and forth. And this was in 2016, and there's a lot of changes going on on this in, in entirely. For instance, I mentioned, someone mentions the gzip uh, option for S3 upload. I think we could have used that, make, made use of that in, in this situation. So, it, what it was, yeah, I think that th those things can really help things if you have these complex uh, cloud uh, workflows. Uh, but th this is a short of a diagram, what we figured out in this crisis room. And that crisis room is probably the closest we can get like a situation like, you know, Chris Hadfall is in. It felt a bit like mission control, how to solve this in uh, a short time. So, uh, the, the, the way we plan to do this, and, and, and we worked by doing this, as, as I mentioned, we already had workflows for desktop, and it, it, it run in different sections with those chunks, so we tried to figure out what's uh, the part where the most heavy processing is, 
and then we try to upload that stage to the cloud and, and process it there and then get it back. Uh, so we had a, a part in this workflow where files existed in FME feature store files, the, the FME internal formats actually. So we decided to, that's what we want to mirror up into the cloud and do the heavy processing on and getting back. So I tried to make this diagram. It, it's a bit simplified, of course, with all the workspaces because they are a bit more complicated than what I'm going to show. But we set it up like, it's, it's basically a three zone solution in the way that we have our own network to the left with our raw data beginning. And there we use the FME desktop as a, a sort of a file pump or file uh, uh, sender and receiver. So uh, if you look at the first one, uploading FFS file to a bucket in S3. Bucket is this concept where you store data in, in S3. If you haven't looked at that, uh, it's pretty really easy to use when you get uh, started with it. And it's also pretty cheap, actually, working with it. So we set up a desktop as a client for this solution, uploading data to um, Amazon S3. So at that point, we have uploaded that. But then, of course, FME Cloud is in Amazon too, but it's not in the same file area. So we have to transfer the data to FME Cloud to, to process it. Even though that's much faster because now we are in the same, you know, in, in, in the same region. And so that's pretty fast moving that uh, like that. So that means that while that is done, we got the data into the bucket, we have to have some process that downloads data to FME Cloud. And at, it, it's at this point it starts to get a bit complicated for the, because there's a lot of upload, download, upload, download, and where are we really? Because, because often you are, you, you're used to download meaning to your local computer here. So, so there's one process uh, downloading from the bucket in that case. So, so that was FME Cloud Workspaces running. And when that was uh, processed, uh, actually creating Minecraft files, which is a tile format, uh, region files is it called, uh, it had to send the data back to uh, the bucket in Amazon S3. So that finished, uh, in that case, it's an uploader, moving it to that uh, instance there. And finally running in our local network as a desktop service, this file pump, as I call it, got the data back locally, like do this. So it, it, it took a while to wrap your hand, uh, head around this, but it's really not that many transformers to get it running. So uh, th this is uh, one, one part of it um, where you can see uh, uh, the, the reading of um, Get, getting listing the buckets, so there is a transformer where you can list the content of a bucket in Amazon S3, and then we download it to um, the shared resource area in uh, in cloud. Uh, doing this, and as we used workspaces we already had, there were things we could have done better, of course, because we didn't zip the FFS file or something like that. So that meant we had to take care of some index file and stuff like that. We'd made things a bit, bit harder to work with, so that's why we have um, uh, some testing and sorting going on there. But it wasn't that difficult. Uh, we were on a tight time schedule. And uh, as you can see, when we did, when they then get files from the bucket into the shared resource of FME Cloud, we fire up uh, another workspace that actually do the conversion. So we have a main workspace here driving and uh, getting the data and then fire up uh, the actual conversion. And that's the nice thing there. We had no limit on how many engines we wanted to start in that case. We were ready to run with like 16 engines and stuff. So th this is the final parts of um, the workspace that's being called in this case because this one transformed the um, FFS files into the actual Minecraft files. Uh, we have in this process before, there's actually a quite more uh, complicated 3D stuff going on by uh, overlaying on point cloud data, extracting heights, creating houses in 3D. Cool stuff shown in the video that I can't display, but it's, uh, we'll see if we can get it. I, I, I'm gonna get another try in the end towards it here. So, and then uh, finally, um, when that process is done, it's moved back into the bucket in there. So there's, now we're in the upload towards downloading it. It's a bit complicated there. So there's also, we have 
make quite a lot of use of the feature reader, which really helps in those situations, setting up uh, workflows in the cloud, I think, um, because you can really s control what's going to be read and not without having too many workspaces in there. So uh, what we found there, uh, we did run this process for different um, yeah, sort of counties, you can say, in Sweden. So there were quite a lot of data. So this is one of them. And um, I think here we fire up like 50,000 jobs or something in this one. But we, what we could see was that this process mostly used about four engines uh, simultaneously. Uh, so that was the limit of how fast we could transfer data in, within the Amazon to fire up. Sometimes it went up to five or six in this process, but really we didn't need more because we couldn't transfer data as fast to do that. So, but the good thing was that we could really start many instances of clouds uh, to, to do parallel processes even in the cloud instances. Uh, so working with this. So where am I in time? Uh, okay, 10 in, oh, that's good. And um, th the result was that, that we really cut this from several weeks to just a few days. I can't really remember if it was like three days or something like that, the processing, we did that. And, and it really was, when, when, we, when we just calmed down in this situation and drew the, the workflow, how to move data between these different areas, it really was, a bit easier than we first anticipated in doing this. And it really wasn't that expensive either because, you know, yeah, it costs money depending on how much you use it, but if you do it in a fairly effective and short time, it's really what's worth the money. And also, of course, we got a very happy client still after this one. So we managed to solve this in a tight situation. His name is Bobo Tidestrom, the guy in charge at National Land Survey. So, uh, so this was in uh, 2016, and uh, we, were, we were actually really proud because in this project, you can find all of this data at the National Land Service homepage, and it's been used in, yeah, by th thousands of students in schools in urban planning and different projects and so on. And this was actually awarded the, the digital project of the year, 2016, in, in Sweden. And, and that was in competition with, you know, more traditional online services like uh, uh, get recipes from pharmacists, uh, tourism information, and uh, music streaming services and so on. But, but this was the winning project that we uh, which made the client very happy, of course, and, uh, and us too. And if you look at the different kind of results, uh, you, can, you can find a lot of that at... Uh, uh, I think you can Google Swedish National Land Survey and Minecraft and you find the download pages, for example. They also have examples of what's it being used for. And this is an example of uh, Gävle, uh, which is the city where the National Land Survey have their main office. It, it's famous for their Christmas goats there. So it's, uh, of course, the kids uh, model this one in there. But this Christmas goat, you can find this in uh, many examples at the knowledge base too, because the National Land Survey have been uh, really, really early adapters of FME technology. So if you search for the city of Gävle or Gavle in 3D, you probably don't have the Swedish characters if you search there. You will find an example also with that goat down there to the right. And there also was an incident, uh, I think it was a bit of a year ago, someone created uh, in Minecraft a uh, Gävle goat with uh, um, TNT in Minecraft and blew it up. I know who it was, and it was not me. <laughs> Might have been somewhere, you know, connected to this event somewhere, sir. Yeah, somewhere there. Uh, and also, uh, as I mentioned, this uh, Kiruna, um, a reason they wanted uh, a model of this area is that Kiruna, that city I mentioned, or that municipality, is this big. Uh, it's interesting to do planning and stuff like in there because that's a city that is actually being moved house by house um, as uh, there's been a lot of mining during the year so it's undermined uh, the stability so this city is being moved completely house by house so uh, that yeah it's a, a city in the north with a lot of focus in there i recommend you google it because it's a pretty cool project to move a city uh, house by house 
So that's why one, one of the reasons they selected this area. And also another um, area was um, uh, Gotland, which is an area outside Sweden. Uh, and they have this um, old city, Visby, in there. So that was actually the natural uh, the National Heritage Board that wanted to use that model in there because there's an old medieval town in there. And also they every, every year have this politics week there uh, where people discuss politics and it's a lot of media coverage and then of course they, the authorities wanted to show off their Minecraft model of this area where they had this political debates and so on. So uh, we made that. So where are we on time? Let's see that. Yeah, something like that. And uh, yeah, before firing up, I, I think this is really interesting, especially for uh, for us. There are a few of us who are really gamers by heart. Uh, when I grew up, um, I was one of the ones who, you know, scrapped all the money I could get, uh, saving up, nagging down my parents to get a home computer because we would use it to store recipes and other useful stuff. But really, I wanted to create and play computer games. Doing this, I had a Vic 20. So my mother was very wor worried for this because we never spent time outside. And she said, There is no future in gaming. <laughs> Boy, she was wrong. If we look at in a, our city in Malmö, Sweka has a pretty big office with like 500 people. We bought uh, a year ago. The local gaming company, they, they, they recently got a deal to create the entire game service for, uh, for Avatar. They bought a block, right, of no houses there. So no future in gaming. I don't know if that's true. So, but it's good to be able to combine both uh, both of these areas. So, uh, thanks for that, and also a big shout out to my colleague uh, Anna Larson, who did a lot of this work. So, I think I'm good. And possibly some questions. No, we created those maybe FME too. So we we had uh, yeah you know it's a classic workflow where you have the uh, the building footprints uh, you overlap that we ha we had a point cloud with uh, the national height model, so we overlaid that with the point cloud and you know and then deducted the the height of the buildings and so on, crazed a bit subtle. So we did that in the process too. No, we didn't have that, so that's not. And that's, I, I forgot to mention this. This was also a process for, uh, in Sweden, there's not that much open data yet, but this data were put in the open. So, uh, and that also made it possible for us to use the cloud because it was, if it was closed and, and data that uh, costed money, it would probably be a legal issue too for us to use the cloud too. But this was released into the open, so it's completely free there. Uh, we use, I, I can't remember the specs, but I, I think we used uh, not the, uh, uh, what's its degree? It's enterprise that is the highest? We, we used the second highest, I remember. I don't remember. Is that professional or something? Yeah, that's the instance we used, and maybe Stuart knows the specs on that one. I don't. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been really cool to try to see what the GZIP option and upload would have done. Maybe it would have meant that we could really benefit from the even more powerful instance. I suspect the transfer could be a bit faster in that process. Hmm? Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, we used, but. Uh, we had, you know, we hadn't really tweaked it, so I, I think it's like the default compression of five or six or something like that in there. So we really hadn't, as, as you said, we weren't really prepared for that, so we took what we had. But of course, there's a lot of tweaking to be done there. Yep. Yeah, I think I'm good. Thank you. Very much.